So we've travelled across Waitaha, across the Canterbury Plains, following the braided river of the Rakaia. And we're here at the Hapoa, Duncan, and you're a freshwater ecologist. So you're interested in environments like this, but what makes a braided river, that ecosystem, so special? Well, I think one of the reasons that a braided river is so special is because they're actually so rare. There are only a few places around the world where, where braided rivers occur. And in New Zealand, the, the vast majority of them are in actually here in Canterbury. So there are three things that you need to make a river braid. You need the, the supply of water, these big floods that come down out of the mountains, and you need abundant sediment. That's from those, those mountains eroding. And then you need this room to move. And so what will happen is that a big, big flood will occur on a nor'wester up in the Alps. It will carry all this water and sediment down the river and that allows the river to move around across the floor of the valley, across, across the available room that it has to move. And what's happening is as the river is moving from side to side, it's creating and destroying all these different types of habitats. So islands and, and channels and wetlands and springs, and all these sorts of things. So what you end up with where there's room is for this great wide braided river with all sorts of different habitat types across it. And of course, all these different habitat types have different forms of life, different birds and plants, insects, vertebrates, lizards, all, all these different forms of life occurring across this, this jigsaw, this mosaic of the riverbed. So it's a home to a whole range of species. It's a real biodiversity hotspot. Exactly, yes. So it must be impacted by climate change though. It, it will be. It's very difficult to predict how those impacts will play out. But what's going to happen is, with as the climate changes, we will see changes in, in the flow coming down the river. And that's going to affect the amount of sediment that comes down and how it's moved around. And another one of the major threats to braided rivers that, that encroaches on how much they can move is, is woody weeds. So willows, gorse, lupins, broom, things like that. They all bind the river together prevent it from moving and of course as climate change progresses there will be more weeds coming into the area that previously couldn't survive that will, will add to that that constraint of the river. So climate change will, will affect the braided rivers in a, in a number of different ways, some of them hard to predict. The important thing is that we, we, we try to understand how these impacts unfold and try to incorporate that understanding into the way we manage these rivers in the future. So Duncan, obviously fish are an important part of a braided river ecosystem. What do you know about the fish in this hour? Well, a large majority of the, the fish species that we have in New Zealand and in the Rakaia River itself are, are migratory. And so they'll spend some portion of their life out at sea. And then they've got to come into the river to either, either to live or to spawn or to feed in fresh water. And so the harper that we see behind us, this is the, the mouth of the Rakaia, is a really important environment because there are fish coming, fish going. At certain times of year, the, the numbers of fish historically coming through here were, were enormous. And in particular, there's a, there's a little, little silvery fish called a smelt, and these used to run up the rivers in very high numbers, and the trout would feed on them, the kawai would feed on them, the birds would feed on them, the birds sort of have their nesting colonies down here that are supported by the fish, but what we've noticed over the last sort of 10, five to 10 years is that these runs of, of smelt aren't happening in the same numbers that they used to do. And so it's really important that we, we try to understand what is, what is happening here. Is this a climate change related issue or is it something happening in the river? So we're, we're doing a lot of survey work down here at the minute to understand fish populations in the river. Once we've done that, the difficult thing then is to figure out why they may have changed. Right, so that survey work is like getting another piece of the puzzle to try and solve this big issue of climate change. That's right, it's, it's one more tiny piece of the puzzle. Climate change sort of affects everything, all aspects of our life and the nature around us, but um, yeah, we need to try to understand what's going on so that we can react. Yeah, kia ora Duncan, really interesting, thank you. Thank you.